Hey, I love food. No, no, it's true. I really, really love food. And what you're seeing right now is my current favorite. Now, what's so special about this dish? Well, this dish actually represents something very unique about American culture. And I want to tell you all about it, but I have to tell you at the end of this lesson. So stay tuned. I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right, today we are going to do episode two of how to express yourself in English. Now we have this simple formula, D plus P plus P. Now you're going to use this formula to express yourself in English like a native English speaker when you are speaking about skills or abilities. Now I promise this simple formula is going to take your English to the next level. So let's get started. Here we go. Now each of these letters represents something important. The letter D stands for describe the letter P stands for personal and the other P stands for process. So getting started with the letter D, this stands for describing the basic skill or ability. Whenever you're speaking in English and you're trying to express yourself, you always want to start by giving a good foundation. So you're going to describe the actual ability that you're talking about or that the discussion is focused on. Okay. So we have described the basic skill or ability. Now, how do we do this? So let's say, for example, we're speaking about singing. Now, you know, very well that I love to sing and many of you have commented on my singing and I really appreciate your comments, but how do we describe this basic ability? Here we go. I said, Singing is basically producing musical sounds with your voice and following a specific rhythm. Now, just to make sure you understand what rhythm is, for example, let's say I have my fingers and I'm going to snap. So I'm just randomly snapping right now. There's no rhythm, right? But then let's say I follow a specific pattern. So I go boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. That's a rhythm. Okay. All right. So let's continue. But being able to sing well is a totally different story. A good singer is someone who is able to control their voice and create musical sounds that are pleasing to the ears of those listening. Now, what you'll notice on the screen is that I have bolded some words and also underlined them because these are expressions or vocabulary words that I want to explain to you in a little bit more detail. So here we go. The first one, the first expression is a totally different story. So in English, we say a different story and it's used to refer to a situation, usually a bad one. That is opposite of a previous situation you mentioned. So let's say, for example, we're going to talk about the weather just for example, and we want to use this expression. So let's say I'm telling you about the weather from yesterday. I say, oh man, the weather in my hometown, woo -wee, it was amazing yesterday. The sun was shining. You could hear the birds chirping. The wind was blowing really softly. There was a nice breeze. The weather was amazing, but today is a different story. So you see what happened there, right? I gave you one situation related to yesterday's weather, right? And then I gave you the opposite situation. Today's weather is a different story. So you can naturally guess what today's weather is. Ah, yesterday's weather was amazing, but today it's not that good. Well, actually today's weather is very gloomy and rainy. So it's opposite of yesterday's weather. Make sense. So we use the expression, a different story when once again, we're referring to a situation that is usually bad or opposite of another situation. Okay. So let's look at some more example sentences. Here we go. First, we have this one. I love apples, but bananas are a different story. Again, you can guess, ah, she likes apples, but she doesn't like bananas. And again, just by using this expression, you were able to understand that, right? Okay, here we go. Next we have the rent is cheap here, but it's a different story in the city. And finally, 
This rice is amazing, but the soup is a different story. Okay. So again, you can use this expression when you want to express the opposite, usually a bad situation. Okay. All right. Now we had another vocabulary word. So the other vocabulary word was pleasing or the other expression and vocabulary words in this section. So pleasing, giving a sense of happy satisfaction or enjoyment, satisfying or appealing, giving pleasure. So I want you to think about two situations. Let's say, for example, uh, we're talking about two different sounds. The first sound is of a car screeching down the road and then suddenly hitting something or crashing into a wall or crashing into a car. Now, no one dies, but think about that sound, the sound of a car crash. Is that a pleasant sound or is that a sound that kind of, ooh, ah, it doesn't sound too good. Exactly. Now on the opposite, in the opposite situation, I want you to think about a baby, a baby that has just finished eating, a baby that is happy and sitting or laying on its mother's chest. And let's say it's a baby boy and he's looking at his mother lovingly and making little sounds. Those sounds usually make us as adults feel happy. So those are pleasing sounds. So again, a car crash is not a pleasing sound, but a baby cooing or singing softly is a very pleasing sound. Make sense? All right, good. Now let's see some example sentences. Okay. So pleasing, giving a sense of happy satisfaction or enjoyment. Here's the sentence. That was a very pleasing performance. Next, this area of Paris has a pleasing climate in September. And finally, her design is very pleasing to the eye. So again, for that last sentence, imagine that someone has developed something and they've designed something, maybe a graphic designer, and she's showing it to a group and they realize that, woo, what she's showing them, ooh, it's amazing. It's making them feel good. It's pleasing to the eye. Make sense? Excellent job. Okay, now let's go back to my screen. So here we go. So we've looked at the expression and the vocabulary word, and now we're moving on to part two of our formula. Letter P for personal. Now we're going to give more details about our personal skill or ability. Remember the first part we did was D, describe the basic ability, right? Now we're going to talk about our personal ability related to singing. Okay. So let's see, this is what I did. Here we go. I have always enjoyed singing because it makes me feel happy. Many people have also told me that I sing quite well. Usually I sing alto or tenor when I am in a choir, but it all depends on which song we are singing at the time. All right. So what did I do? I told you a little bit more information about my personal ability, my personal ability to sing. I gave you information about why I like it. I told you where I do it. And then I also gave you details about how I do it. Again, this is part two of the equation, giving personal abilities or giving a description of your personal ability. But I also have some words and expressions that I want to go over. You see, I said alto or tenor, and I said, depends on. Well, let me explain this really quickly. So alto or tenor, these are musical terms referring to the voice tone when someone is singing, when someone is singing. So alto represents a higher tone than tenor. Now, let me see if I can show you this uh, really quickly. So let's say, for example, alto. So let's say the song is sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. All right. So alto, but then tenor. Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. So I dropped my voice down a little bit lower. Okay. Now it's early in the morning. So my voice is actually a little bit lower than usual. But again, alto was a little bit higher and tenor is a little bit lower. Okay. All right. So let's see some example sentences using these two words. Here we go. Do you sing the alto or the tenor part? Next. I heard that she sings soprano and alto. And finally, she started by singing alto and then changed to tenor. So again, you see how we use this or these two words in sentences. All right. So let's move on to the next expression we have. 
This is a pattern depends on now. This means to be determined or decided by something. Now, in an earlier example, I mentioned that the weather was great yesterday, but today it's a different story. Why? Because it's rainy and overcast. So using this expression, this pattern depends on, I can say I would like to go swimming, but it depends on the weather. So I'm saying, well, if the weather is good, I can go. But if the weather's not good, I won't be able to go again. The weather today is not good, so I can't go swimming. Okay. All right. Now let's see some examples. And this is here we go. It depends on the weather. Exactly what I said. Then it all depends on what my mom says tomorrow. And finally, it depends on what her father says about the party. Again, she may or may not be able to go. It all depends on what her father says. If he's in a good mood, then he'll say yes. But if he's in a bad mood, he's not going to say yes. Okay. All right. So let's move on now to the final part of our formula. The last letter P for process. Explain the process you went through to develop your skill or ability. So again, we started off by first describing the ability. Then we described our personal ability. And now we're going to describe the process we went through to develop our ability. Okay. So again, speaking about singing, this is what I said. Growing up, I sang a lot in the choir at my church. We practiced on a regular basis, which helped me to learn how to harmonize with others. I also enjoyed listening to music at home. So after choir practice, I would go home and sing my favorite songs at the top of my lungs. So again, I literally stepped you through how my singing ability was developed. So again, I said, when I was growing up, I sang in the choir. Now choirs are very popular in America. So little children will sing in choirs at their church and they really enjoy it. So I sang in the choir. We practiced a lot. And then I mentioned how we tried to figure out how to harmonize with each other. Right. And again, I'm going to explain this word. Then I mentioned that I enjoyed singing at home. Many people sing in the shower, they sing in their room. So I also enjoyed singing at home. And finally, I said that I would go home and not just sing, but sing at the top of my lungs. So let me explain exactly what these words and expressions mean. So here we have harmonize. Now this is used to express the action of adding notes to a melody to produce harmony or to produce a pleasing sound by the combination of voices. So when multiple people sing together, they change their tones to match the other individuals, but someone may go high. Another person may go low and they match their voices to produce a beautiful sound. Okay. We say that's harmonizing. Okay. Now let's see some examples and instances. Here we go. The three sisters harmonize. Well, next, a group of singers were harmonizing on the street corner. And finally, our choir teacher told us to harmonize with each other. Okay. Now the next expression was at the top of my lungs. And this literally means as loud as possible. So I want you to think of a classroom situation, right? But a classroom situation that includes little people. So my niece is very young and she goes to school. She's in pre-K or pre-kindergarten. So she's about three or four years old. And so there are a lot of little people in her class that are about three, four, and some of them are five years old. So when little kids get together, they don't necessarily know how to speak quietly. Usually they speak as loud as they possibly can. We say they're talking or screaming at the top of their lungs. All right. So let's see some examples and it says, here we go. First we have, I want to scream. I love you at the top of my lungs. Next, she was yelling at the top of her lungs. And finally, you don't have to sing at the top of your lungs. Now, this is the formula we looked at today. D plus P plus P describe personal and process. Now, remember using this formula, you'll be able to speak like a native English speaker about the topics of skills and abilities. So 
I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember, if you want the PDF, the free PDF, all you have to do is click the link in the description below. And also, if you want to keep studying with me, remember, all you have to do is go to the Speak English with Tiffany Academy. You see it right here on your screen and click the link in the description. I would love to be your permanent English teacher. All right. I will talk to you in the next video, but as always, remember to speak English. All right, it's story time. Okay, so this is the picture I showed you at the very beginning of the video. It's currently my favorite thing to eat. What you're seeing in this image is my current favorite and I literally eat it once a week, if not more. And it comes from a restaurant called Meze. Now, I believe that this represents American culture or a very important aspect of American culture. You see, in America, we believe in the power of choice, getting things the way you want them and also in the amount that you want them. So this restaurant presents that same principle. You see, when you go to the restaurant, you're presented with multiple options, different choices of things to add on or to add in your bowl. So I like this restaurant because as a vegetarian, they have so many options for me. Now, let me show you some of the options. So when you first walk in, you are able to tell them what you want. You can either have, a uh, a bowl or you can also get a wrap or you can even get they have a few other things but i normally stick with the bowl okay so you first choose your base the foundation so you can have rice or you can also choose lettuce or you can choose both and i normally get both and it also comes with pita bread when i say this food is delicious woo -wee! so then after that you can add your protein um and again i'm vegetarian so i normally choose falafel and falafel for those that are um in my community the students watching this video some of you actually may love falafel too if you do put it in the comment section so falafels are just um round patties they're fried and they're made from chickpeas chickpeas and different kinds of beans okay after that you add toppings they have hummus they have three different types of hummus then they have turkish salad they have couscous they have tabbouleh or tabbouleh for those that are uh, Lebanese, you can tell me if that pronunciation was proper or correct or not. Um, they have different kinds of vegetables, different kinds of beans. They have corn and beets and cabbage and all of these things that you can put on top of the bowl and you can mix it together. Then after that, they have different sauces and I normally choose spicy mango and also tahini. So again, by the end, as you can see, my bowl is pretty huge and I usually eat it mm, for two meals. So I love to eat the food there because it's fresh, it's well seasoned and it is so delicious. So when you come to America, you're going to see that a part of our culture is the power of choice and you can choose many different types of food. So not just Mediterranean, you can have Chinese, you can have Spanish, you can have all of these different types of foods in one area. So I hope you enjoyed this story. Hopefully when you come to America, you can also try Meze and I will talk to you in the next video. Have a good one.